Coming up on the Q30 newscast, Sal Filardi provides an update on the construction of the South Quad and what it will bring to the university. Q30's Andrew Reynolds had an exclusive interview with Chief Experience Officer Tom Ellett discussing plans for the academic year. A closer look at how the university is dealing with the high temperatures this week. All that and much more on this edition of the Q30 Newscast. Welcome back. Welcome back to the first Q30 TV newscast of the school year. I'm Keith Savage and alongside me is Joe Monty. Joe, how excited are you? Keith, I've been looking forward to this all summer long. I'm super excited to be here next to you at the desk and at the kickoff of the newscast, the first show of the year. So that's great. I agree. So let's get into it. Starting off tonight, the university is taking measures to battle this heat. At around 6 p.m. today, the university announced that the Bobcat Den will be closed all day today and tomorrow. To make up for this, Cafe Q will open until 11 p.m. both nights. There will be three fresh food stations open from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Students can expect the Bobcat Den to open back up on Saturday for its regular schedule. Also, earlier today, Quinnipiac Chief of Public Safety Tony Reyes sent an email saying that the Carl Hansen and Rocky Top Student Center will remain open overnight for the next two days to provide relief from the heat as both places are completely air conditioned. The email also reminded students living in comments and ledgers that there are air conditioners that were added this summer in the lounges inside their buildings. Quinnipiac is getting bubbly. Yesterday, President Judy Olean announced a $3.6 million partnership with PepsiCo. The money will be given out over the next 10 years. Part of the funds will go towards a new scholarship for future students. It will also go towards a new initiative, Pepsi Co. Fund for Environmental Science and Sustainability. That will support students interested in travel and study abroad programs in the College of Arts and Sciences and sustainability projects on campus. If you haven't already noticed, there's a lot of construction happening on campus lately. Lucky for us, Q30's Julia Barcello has an update about what's going on on the South Quad. The South Quad construction is still underway. Beginning in December of 2022, the $293 million project has finally started to take shape. The Quad will include three new buildings, a general academics building, a new school of business, and a new first year residence hall. The South Quad is LEED certified along with a recognition for energy use tracking. Quinnipiac is now a featured school on the Princeton Review's Guide to Green Colleges. South Villardi, the Vice President for Facilities and Capital Planning, explained the sustainability process. There's, that's a whole host of, of components. You know, there's energy efficiency, there's um, uh, sustainability in the way construction is done, or recycling um, leftover products. So we have multiple dumpsters on site. The university says this is an aim to promote a healthy ecosystem that encourages students, faculty, and staff to practice sustainable behaviors. Construction of the quad has been moving at an effective pace. Filardi stated what the next steps are as they wrap up construction for this academic year. Um, if you have walked by, you can see it's moving right along. The backside is all bricked up and they're actually putting windows in, so it'll be closed up uh, and they'll be working on the inside. In an interview, Tom Ellett, the Chief Experience Officer at Quinnipiac, explained more on how this will impact the university community. Creating a committee uh, that will look at the programmatic aspect of a new residence hall. Uh, what, what kind of nuanced experiences should be a part of it? The new business building will feature a business innovation hub as an incubator to build and test new ideas. There will also be a financial technology center where students will use trading platforms, investment tools, and data systems. The general academic building will also include a 700 seat auditorium for both university and community events. Reporting from the South Quad, I'm Julia Barcello, Q30 News. Students will be moving on to a new website to schedule courses and more, as Quinnipiac announced Thursday that they will be moving on from self-service to Stellic. The university registrar, Amy Terry, said, quote, Stellic allows students to plan their path towards graduation and will help advisors and administrators get a clearer picture of students and how to best support their goals. 
Stellic provides an easy drag and drop for adding cores to stage degree plan. Stellic also allows for seamless communication with advisees and advisors directly in the platform and quote. To get started, visit Q SGA elections are coming soon, and there are six positions up for grabs. If you're interested in being involved or are interested in running for office, there are election information sessions which you can attend in the near future. Three already happened on Friday, September 1st, Tuesday, September 5th, and today. There will be two more information sessions over the next few days. One of them will take place tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on Zoom, and the last session will take place on Friday at 3 o'clock in the Student Center. Election Day will be on Tuesday, September 19th. Quinnipiac has renovated their mail services by bringing in brand new smart lockers <laughs> on the Mount Carmel and York Hill campus. In an email sent out by the school post office last month, talking about the changes at the two places. It says, quote, both are being replaced with a system of intelligent package pickup lockers. These lockers will allow for student self-services in the pickup of mail and packages as long as the building is open. Students can get their mail and packages, end quote. There's also a new package tracking system where students receive text notifications when the package is available. Listen to what a student had to say about the difference. The lockers are actually really easier to use just because you can come whenever you need to and you don't have to worry about going to the window and waiting in a long line. Quinnipiac added a new dining station to the cafeteria that should make eating on campus safer for people with dietary restrictions. The station is called Delicious Without. It's an allergen free and is run by trained chefs who eliminate the possibility of cross contamination in their food. Rather than each dining station offering special foods, Allergen-free dishes will be served in one location for students to conveniently get what they need. In Cafe Q, the school added reusable food containers called Aussie. Students can purchase them at the cash register for a one-time payment of $5.99. The diner re returns the green container to Aussie collection system and there they are collected, washed, sanitized, and returned for reuse. Now Keith, are you curious about how dining, dorms, and parking is looking this year? I certainly am, Joe. Well, lucky for us, Andrew Reynolds has an exclusive sit down with Chief Experience Officer Tom Ellett to talk about those topics and more. Thank you so much, Tom, for sitting down with us today. We really appreciate your time to talk about the experience with students and some questions they may have. So my first question for you is kind of on an administration level. What is it kind of like to be back at school, students on campus, just kind of the overall uh, first week experience so far? I mean, for me, it's fantastic. I, I love being among students, welcoming our new students, and welcoming back those who had a great summer internship and uh, hearing about what uh, great uh, movement they're making for their careers uh, and con continued connections with their friends. Can you kind of, kind of talk a little bit about that as well as uh, how you are negating these issues that students may have with the uh, dining? Um, great question. I mean, I, I think that we're always looking to try to make an experience better. And, and when you think about it, you know, if you ate in the same exact space every single night, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you get bored. And so one of the things that we've done uh, this year is uh, we've hired three students to become menu makers. And they, this is the first school in the country to do this, is what Chartwells has told me. And they are choosing every dinner option in Cafe Q all year long. And so obviously the cooks will be cooking it, but they will be selecting the menus. They will be reviewing how many students ate a certain option in a given night and remove that from the cycle if students aren't happy. The Dining Service Advisory Board is open to every student every other Tuesday at five o'clock, second floor of the Student Center. We'll only get better when students' voices heard and they do something with it, solutions, providing solutions. Can you kind of give us an update on um, what is going on with the study lounges and if there are still students in that situation or if they kind of moved out into the, uh, the, vacant, the vacancies in the other dorm halls? Yeah, th th that process is ongoing. Uh, I think we're down to 22 students now. And after the weekend, I think we'll be in the high teens. Uh, it, there is a possibility that there will be some students who stayed to lounge this semester. You know, th this, is, this is a good problem to have. Quinnipiac's popular. Uh, we've reduced uh, the admittance rate uh, for this class. 
which is always a good thing for an institution to do. Um, I, I think it's a short term. We have a 417 uh, bed facility that I had the honor of touring yesterday. And I will tell you, those views from the fourth floor lounge where you see the sleeping giant and you see um, you know, the, the, the um, main campus, it, it's absolutely stunning. Um, and then my final question is, what do you say is your kind of your goal for this year? What is something you want to get done or kind of learn about the student experience on campus, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I mean the breakthrough residence hall experience that we're building, certainly one, uh, continue the trajectory of enrollment, I think is important. And at the same time, look at our admittance rate and say, Thanks, Andrew. We're about to go to our first commercial break. But before we do that, Joe, today has been a very hot day. I'll tell you, I am sick of this heat. I can't take it much more. But hopefully, we have some cooler temperatures coming in the future. Yeah, Vanessa Blasi is here with us to give that a little weather tease. Thank you, Joe and Keith. As you guys mentioned, today is one of the hottest days that we're going to see in September in Connecticut. So hot that, as you mentioned before, the university had to close the Bobcat Den. Not only is it closed today, but it's also closed tomorrow. Take a look here. The temperatures today reach a high of 91 degrees and a low of 70. And tomorrow, even hotter, it'll be 93 degrees with a low of 70. So if you're a first year, second year student, you don't have a air conditioning, I really recommend go to the store, buy yourself a fan, maybe even two. You'll definitely need it. And lastly, we have Friday with a high of 84 degrees. So it looks like it might be cooling down. Stick with us after the break to find out if this heat is really here to stay. Thanks for sticking with us. Over the summer, Quinnipiac announced a new partnership for shuttle buses with the valet parking. Cindy Weimer has more on this change. Quinnipiac University has brought major updates to university transportation. In an email sent to students on August 14th by Chief of Public Safety, Tony Reyes, the switch to a new shuttle service, Valet Park of America, was announced. The updates launched with shuttle operation on August 21st and included brand new shuttles, an increased number of buses, longer operation times, as well as redesigned transportation loops. In an interview, Reyes explained that timely transportation was one of the major concerns when making changes to the service. We really focused on um, creating um, and looking at the routes and, and ridership and creating routes that were um, more streamlined Complaints from students about the previous shuttle system included that there wasn't an accurate way of predicting bus arrival times. Quinnipiac responded by introducing a new app called Passio Go. The app promises students the ability to see real-time tracking of the shuttles. Along with more reliable transportation, the number of shuttles complying with the American Disability Act has increased from two to six, making bus service more accessible for all. The shuttles have been running for over two weeks, Students have shared how well they believe the service lives up to expectations. 
I'm a first year, so I don't have a car on campus. So it's really nice having those shuttles. They, they actually, they pretty good timing. They have a few running at the same time. So I'm able to get to York Hill and back whenever I need to. Although some students are impressed with the updates, others shared some concerns. The only issue I have is that they got rid of the bigger shuttle, so these shuttles hold fewer people, so sometimes there are a lot of kids still waiting at the bus stop. To view a daily schedule for the shuttles, students can visit MyQ for full information on routes and times. Sydney Weimer, Q30 News. Hamden Mayor Lauren Garrett issued a parking ban on August 28th for certain streets around Hamden. Those streets include parts of Dixwell Ave, parts of Sherman Ave, and many more. The town is working to repave parts of more than 30 roads around Hamden, and cars are not allowed to park on them until the work has been completed. Vehicles parked on those roads will be towed. A new fuel aid station has been added at the intersection of Whitney and Sherman Avenue. Q30's Connor Core tells us what the addition means after this conversation with the mayor of Hamden. More than 30,000 cars travel along Whitney Avenue daily, acting as the connector between Interstate 91 and 691. Heading south towards Interstate 91, there are plenty of places to stop to refuel, like this Gulf, Shell, as well as a mobile next to Odie's place. The only problem is that all the gas stations are on one side of the road. Because of that, construction began over the summer at 3311 Whitney Avenue on a new fueling station, offering both gas and EV options. When finished, it will include a convenience store and 12 apartments. Before construction began, it was owned by Quinnipiac University. It was then sold to Noble Gas in a land swap deal. The five properties were then taken over for the new building. Now with the new fueling station coming to the northbound side of Route 10, Mayor Lauren Garrett says making that right turn is going to be a lot safer than making the left one across two lanes to get to the previous stations. Mayor Garrett said in an interview, quote, it was important to make it a little safer by not having to turn left to go to the gas station. So this alleviates any kind of dangerous turns that would be made. Noble Gas has been on the forefront of energy in Connecticut and Massachusetts. With more than 13 locations in two states, they continue to expand their business, offering a 100% customer satisfaction. That satisfaction looks to continue to come to Hamden with the construction of this new building. Reporting in Hamden, for Q30 News, I'm Connor Kaur. Thank you, Connor. Now, Keith, there's a lot going on in the world of politics. Yeah, I'm, here about, I'm hearing things about the upcoming presidential elections and more. But luckily, Becky Carlton is here to give us more. Thank you, Joe and Keith. The 2024 U.S. presidential election campaign is up and running. Let's take a look at the latest polls. According to 538, as of September 2nd, former President Donald Trump is the clear leader in the Republican race with Trump receiving 51% of support among Republican voters. Polling behind Trump is current Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. DeSantis is receiving about 14% of the Republican vote. The number three candidate is businessman Vivek Ramaswamy, garnering almost 9% of the Republican vote. On the Democratic side, current President Joe Biden remains in a comfortable lead, receiving almost 64% of the Democratic vote. Behind Biden is Robert F. Kennedy Jr., with around 13% of Democrats' support. Moving on to former President Trump's criminal trial. Donald Trump's trial date in Washington, D.C. is set for March 4th. Trump is on the trial due to his alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. The March 4th trial date is just a day before Super Tuesday on the 5th, when over a dozen states have their primary elections. Attorneys say the trial could last up to eight weeks. The D.C. case is not the only case that Trump is facing. Trump is facing three other criminal cases, including in New York, where the former president was charged with 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. This comes from alleged payments during the 2016 presidential race to his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, for hush money payments to women who claim they had affairs with Trump. Trump has denied this and is pleading not guilty to all charges. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton has been impeached after facing many allegations of wrongdoing and legal troubles. Paxton was indicted on multiple counts of security fraud in 2015. Five years later, he was reported to the FBI by his own staff over suspected corruption in 2020. The corruption came over his business with Nate Paul, a real estate investor and donor. Paxton eventually came to a $3.3 million settlement, which led House members to investigate different whistleblowers' claims leading to his impeachment. That's all for politics this week. Reporting for Q30 News, I'm Becky Calkin. Thanks, Becky, for the update. We're going to enter our second break. But when we get back, Vanessa Blasi will give us a full weather report. A pastor at Quinnipiac resigned, and Bernie Brown leaving will give us a national report. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Thanks for sticking with us. Joe, can you guess who's back in the studio with us? Who might that be? It's the one and only. Vanessa Blasi is here for a full weather report. Vanessa, what do you have for us? Thanks, Keith and Joe. I'm glad to be back. We have a lot of weather to talk about this week. For the week, we are looking at a slight rise in temperatures, as I mentioned earlier on in the show. Tomorrow will be a high of 93 degrees, which marks the highest for the rest of the week. And as we get into Friday and the weekend, we're starting to see some clouds coming in with a high of 84 on Friday, a high of 82 on Saturday. And as you can see, the clouds are coming in and turning into thunderstorms for the weekend. We'll have thunder, lightning, and moderate to severe heavy rain over the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Highs of 79 on Sunday and high of 77 on Monday. But as we gear into next week, as classes start again next week, the highs will be 81 degrees, spiking a little bit, but the clouds are moving away. The sunshine is coming back out. If you have any outdoor plans this weekend, I might suggest moving them indoors, but of course, stay with us. Let's move on to the map now. As you can see across Connecticut, we have highs of 91 degrees in a few different areas in Norwich, New London, and New Haven with lows around 70 degrees across the state. Reaching the highest is Hartford tomorrow at 95 degrees and Greenwich at 94 degrees, plus Torrington right up there with Danbury, Danbury at 93 degrees, 69 degrees high, low, and Torrington 89 degrees high and 67 degrees low. This is where our thunderstorms will be coming in around the New Haven area. So again, any outdoor plans, take a look at our weather throughout the weekend, stay updated with us, and best of luck. Thank you, back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Vanessa. On Monday, the state of Connecticut announced an extreme hot weather protocol is in effect until Friday due to the extreme heat and humidity. The protocol was supposed to begin yesterday at noon and end on Thursday at 8 p.m. But the governor's office extended it and schools all over the state were dismissed early the last two days due to that reason. Jordan Lenigan, known to many at Quinnipiac as Father Jordan, has resigned from his position as the Director of Religious Life and the campus pastor. Quinnipiac is looking for a replacement and has applications open to fill both positions. Without a pastor, members of the Quinnipiac community can no longer attend Mass on campus. However, members of Religious Life are attempting to work out a solution. And we're going to have a shuttle service going to Our Lady Mount Carmel at 11 a.m. I talked to a few people that went this weekend over there, and they said it went smoothly, and the pastor even talked about um, Quinnipiac students coming in because they obviously know the issue too. So we're obviously working on that and accommodating the best we can. Research participants are wanted at Quinnipiac for endurance exercise and cognitive testing. The school is conducting a study to investigate the effects of physical fitness level on brain function and memory. People between 18 and 35, non-smokers, and do not have any conditions or diseases that will prevent them from completing the procedures are eligible. If you want to get involved, you will have three visits to Quinnipiac Laboratory at the North Haven campus for a combined total of around five hours. A lot of things are going on around the world, and Keith, I want my national update from only one person. Same here. That person is Brittany Braun-Leven, and she'll be talking all about that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Keith and Joe. Let's get right into national news. On Tuesday, former Proud Boys chairman Enrique Tarrio was given 22 years in prison for his involvement in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Tarrio is charged with seditious conspiracy and leading a failed plot to prevent the transfer of presidential power. The 22-year sentence is the longest jail time for anyone involved in the attack on the Capitol. District Judge Timothy Kelly said, quote, It's kind of hard to put into words how important the peaceful transfer of power is. Our country was founded as an experiment in self-government by the people, but it cannot long endure if the way we elect our leaders is threatened with force and violence, end quote. Mm -hmm. North Korea and Russia are planning to discuss a negotiation between the two countries. Russia's President Vladimir Putin and North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un are planning to meet to discuss ammunition. Russia is looking to buy weapons and refill reserves that were drained from the war in Ukraine. According to experts, North Korea will request energy shipments and weapon technology. This welcoming nature between Russia and North Korea is concerning to nations who are against the war in Ukraine. Maui is still suffering from the wildfires that started in early August. The governor of Hawaii is taking action to help the locals. The death toll has remained at 115 according to local and federal records, but the missing persons number has gone down to 385 from over 1,000. Governor Josh Green is urging people to file a missing persons report to help investigators know who's still missing. According to Green, investigators are actively, actively investigating 41 cases. Green said, quote, and it's not much consolation because our hearts are broken that we lost 115 people. 
for sure, but it is something that we are grateful that it's not 800 or 1,000 like people were projecting earlier. But tomorrow we should have a, t a much tighter number for everyone, end quote. That's all I have for national news. Back to you guys on the desk. Update, Brittany. Now on to sports. Nick Boyd was in the studio here today, and he gave us a cool update on what's going on in the sports world. Let's hear it from Nick. Thanks, guys. It's been a busy time for Bobcat sports, so we'll dive right in. Quinnipiac baseball alum Matthew Batten was called back up by the San Diego Padres last week. The infielder played here at Quinnipiac from 2014 to 2017 and made his major league debut last year. Batten hit his first big league home run over the summer and has hit the ball well for the Padres with a 304 average and an 885 OPS through 20 games. Sticking with Bobcats in the pros, former women's hockey player Danielle Marmer was hired as the general manager of the new Boston D PWHL franchise on Friday. Marmer worked with the Boston Bruins of the NHL last year as a player development assistant and spent seven years at Quinnipiac on the ice as a player and in the front office. Marmer said, quote, I'm a product of the mentors I've worked for. That's something I want to take with me when I think about building this team, end quote. The new league will begin their season in January. And looking around the major fall sports, women's soccer is 2-2 two and two on the year and put up five goals last game against Stonehill. They start conference play on Saturday. Men's soccer is all even through three games with a win, loss, and tie. They dropped their last rep match against Northeastern 2-1 on Tuesday. Volleyball has been on the road recently playing tournaments at Virginia Tech and Columbia. They're 2-6 and, and tip off their last invitation at UMES on Friday. And finally, field hockey is still searching for their first win, but junior Emilia Mazzarelli had a three-goal game in the season opener against New Hampshire. That's all for sports this week. Back to you guys on the desk. For our last story of the evening, the Bradley Street Co-op Bike Shop and the Probus Club are hosting a bicycle and musical instrument recycle drive. They'll be accepting donations at Coles in Hamden, Jimmy's in West Haven, and Goodies in East Haven. All donations are refurbished and donated to those in need. Now that's all we have for this episode of the Q30 Newscast. I had a great time at the Q30 Newscast. Me Going too. back to the bicycle, what's your favorite movie that has a bike in it? So, I mean, if you're talking bicycles and movies, I automatically think of E.T. Same here. It's just a great movie, and that mm -hmm. scene where he's flying up, you can never forget about that. It's nope. always one of the best movie scenes, and I think anybody, majority of people, if they think of bike and movie, they think yeah. of E.T. But overall, like, just as a kid, riding with your friends down the bike, going to the park, mm -hmm. it's just stories you always remember. Mm -hmm. So I think... I still enjoy a good bike ride. Yeah, Every now and then I go on one with my friends, you know, from time to time when the weather's nice. Yeah, it's always great. Mm -hmm. It is always great. Thanks to all the producers, general members, and everyone behind the scenes for making this show possible. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and on X at Q30 Television. And check out our website at Q30Television.com. Have a great night, Bobcats. <laughs>